Enough of this. Make your foolish attempt now. You made your decision long ago, and mercy will not be shown to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I banish you to the abyss until the day of judgment. Legacy AD is a fictional Christian comic book I came across while deep diving through Kickstarter looking for Christian entertainment projects. A brief synopsis taken from the Amazon page, Deacon Foster, a detective who was chosen by God to speak his word boldly and courageously in the face of opposition. God has given him strength and sight into the spiritual realm to battle the schemes and strategies of Satan, as well as battle the evil spirits that followed him and were banished from heaven. Deacon is a voice of biblical perspective on controversial issues in today's society. So we're going to do a little breakdown and analysis analysis from a Christian comic book nerd perspective. But before we get into that breakdown, be sure to leave a like on the video if you are enjoying it and even subscribe for more breakdowns of upcoming Christian fictional comic books and creative projects. You can also find both issues of Legacy AD in the Amazon link in the description to get a digital copy of the comic for only $6. The story kicks off in 1990 with a couple who has a baby on the way enjoying a home cooked meal while discussing the fact that they still don't have a name for their baby. After the conversation, the husband then leaves the home to go off to service in the army and the wife turns on the TV to watch the news. The report at the time details a case of gang violence where two young African American men were killed for the sake of their starter jackets. The wife then goes into prayer for her community. While praying, God sends an angel to the woman regarding instructions towards her son. She is instructed that the baby is to be named Deacon and to be raised in the ways of the Lord because God will make him a great warrior in spiritual warfare and equipping him with the sword of David. We fast forward to the day Deacon is born but that day isn't so joyous as the mother is visited by the commander of her husband's unit who delivers the news that he died in battle. It says he's missing but I'll assume he's dead because he never appears again in the story. The mother then reassures to the captain that God will take care of us. He always does. A 16 year time jump into the future shows us Deacon getting bullied by a group of young men in school and refusing to fight back which aggravates the bullies. The panel monologues about the importance of self control and the fact that our battle has never been against people but against the one behind all deception who will never stop until the last day. Skip into the present day, Deacon is now a police officer working for the Atlanta police to bust a sex trafficking ring. The situation weighs on his heart heavily and he goes into prayer in the back room of the building. However, while praying, a demon manifests and taunts Deacon, telling him they know of him and all the trouble he is causing them in the spiritual realm, but his attempts in the end will be futile when Lucifer rises to the throne. Deacon rebukes the demon and easily defeats it with his sword while banishing it to the abyss until the day of judgment. The final page of issue 1 ends with a monologue by Deacon explaining the details of the sword of King David that he possesses, the war between the devil and his rebellious agents versus God and his kingdom, as well as the fact that those who believe in Jesus Christ have the power to overcome the world. But the battle rages until his return, until this day comes for the glory of God, I will build a legacy. Issue number two kicks off with an interrogation of someone who could be a potential lead to another bust. While that is going on, we cut across to the head crime boss being informed of the crime bust and wanting to know more about the officer who led the bus on the sex trafficking spot. All because this man has a serious demon working behind him. Back at the police station, Deacon requests some information on a person named Warren Bates based on his lead he got from the interrogation. Deacon then takes off to visit his mother blasting I'll Find You by Lecrae and Tori Kelly, which I personally find is a little cool touch of the comic. Just hold on and I'll find you. I'm hanging on by your thread. When Deacon reaches to his mother's home, they have a little light-hearted catch-up conversation, but it is cut short when Deacon is texted the potential location of another the bust. He then speeds off to the location while requesting dispatch to send him backup units. When he gets there, the ETA on the backup units is about 7 minutes. Deacon instead heads in solo with the instructions to not engage with any suspects until the other agents arrive. But when he gets into the building, a voice says to him, we've been waiting on you. 
but there is no one in the building so it automatically meant it's time to draw that god given sword because it's about to be a battle against some demonic entities and i must say i really like the art of this segment and issue 2 in general deacon easily defeats all the entities with some very cheesy dialogue in the mix the reinforcements soon arrive but there was nothing to bust suggesting that bates was tipped off earlier to them arriving probably due to a dirty cop working within the department to which deacon urges that whoever he or she is needs to be flushed out before leaving the scene this issue ends with one of the demons that escaped deacon's onslaught vowing to get revenge on him stating lucifer will be happy when he takes him out over the past year on the channel, I've been primarily breaking down comics, shows, and movies from Marvel and DC and other big fictional franchises of our generation from a Christian perspective. But a major emphasis on fictional stories that evidently twist the Bible or have some sort of clear Christian theological based theme in them. After doing so many videos, I sort of reached my frustration threshold and started making videos looking at unsung Bible events you probably haven't heard about or don't pay much attention to when you read through the Bible. Events like the four lepers who raided a Syrian camp, David's messenger boy who came without a message, and the two cows God used to return the Ark of the Covenant. I believe that God is convicting more and more people about the media they have been consuming and justifying, which is having a ripple effect of these people seeking out decent Christian alternatives. But some of them require quite the digging to come across, which some persons just don't have the patience or know how to come across it. So, one of my goals for this year of 2023 with their explanations is to shift the channel to be a platform which not only touches on the biblically twisted aspect of popular fictional media but to also elevate and provide constructive criticism towards Christian fictional attempts. So with that being said, Legacy AD is on the chopping block where we're going to critique the first two issues of the comic series in my honest opinion as a big comic book nerd and a Christian who knows enough of the Bible, Christian theology and is longing for Christian fictional alternatives alternatives to modern day fiction and i'll be doing so by grading and analyzing the material from four main categories story artwork and creativity when compared to the current industry standard theological basis and how likely i am to recommend it to someone based on my enjoyment of the material and you could probably grade it as well with me according to this grade sheet based on what you heard and saw from the breakdown section of the video so let's start off with the story, which I will honestly give a 3 out of 5. I like the direction and premise of the story and I know the topic of sex trafficking is a tough and difficult one to maneuver in this kind of manner to which I personally like the way it was handled. But the pacing of it, especially the first issue, felt a bit too busy and was trying to cover a lot of things all at once to get the origin of Deacon out there with no time to breathe for me personally. Like I had to reread it to understand the jumps from pre-birth to high school to present day. The second issue did a much better job with the flow of the story and the pacing. When it comes to artwork and creativity, to be fair, I'll give issue 2 a 5 and issue 1 a 3, bringing the total overall score to 4 out of 5. The second issue's artwork is definitely a step up from issue 1, especially the fight against a demonic entity segment and Deacon suit. I don't know what goes on in the behind the scenes of making the comics, so I'm judging from the perspective of someone who doesn't know any information on that end and can only go off of what I was presented with. When it comes to theological basis, which in this case refers to how sound the portrayal of essential Christian doctrine and biblical concepts are translated into the piece of fiction, I'll give it a 4 to 5. The number one hurdle Christian entertainment projects always face, in my opinion, is how can we make this game, comic, show, etc. in a way that we are using the Bible in perfect context while also having enough creative freedom to achieve what we want with our project. I am personally very lenient when it comes to creative freedom with Christian fiction once it does not mix unbiblical concepts and elements taken from clear pagan influences with the things of the Bible to the point it is only classified as Christian entertainment because the author said they were Christian and as an entire breakdown separate from the piece of entertainment itself of how exactly it is meant to be Christian themed. That's for me personally. So for Legacy AD, I like the way they handled the concept of spiritual warfare and the importance of prayer and God's power to battle against demonic forces rather than our own strength, which is something as a Pentecostal Christian who is penning their own spiritual warfare based comic and has seen the sheer amount of what I call 
Looney Tunes level clunk foolery regarding modern day spiritual warfare, I'd honestly say I like the way Legacy AD handled the topic. My only gripe why I didn't give it a 5 out of 5 in the theological basis category is the sort of David aspect like, don't get me wrong, it looks cool and I love the direction of the suit, but I just personally prefer the armor of God route and I feel like the suit can pass for stylized armor of God rather than the common Roman or crusader armor of God depictions people think about. But to my knowledge from reading the comic, it was never explicitly stated that that was the armor of God. As well as from reading through the books of Samuel, Kings and Chronicles recently, I never got the feeling that the swords David used in battle had any great spiritual significance akin to Moses and Aaron's staff or Elijah's mantle. And I hope we all know that the power was not in the item, but it was simply what God instructed them to use to achieve the great feats. I think the story, if it went along the route of the sword of the spirit, it would have had the same impact. But that's just my opinion on a theological basis because when you go down that route of like the sword of David being brought into modern day you're playing with, it has the same creative freedom but just for like people who are very hardcore, you know, bible based, you're playing with some let's just say threading on murky water in that sense especially the fact that god sent it to the mother to hold on to in a wardrobe as a physical i think from my interpretation of it it's a physical item that god gave the mother rather than the entire story being about spiritual warfare in that sense that's like my issue with the theological aspects and i think just thinking about it now i think i'll give it I'll keep it at a 4 out of 5 just on that aspect but that's just my personal gripe about the pacing of the story when it comes to the theological aspect of it. So on to the final category of how likely I am to recommend it to someone based on my enjoyment with the material and I'll say I'll give it a 3 out of 5 simply because of how much I liked issue 2, didn't enjoy issue 1 all that much. Legacy AD by no means is a Marvel or DC killer and the books are very short. Like you can cover it in under 20 minutes but just the fact that there is someone out there putting in the time to bring on Christian fictional alternatives is more than enough for me to recommend it to anyone. Not as a replacement to the current landscape of available fiction which is ultimately what I am trying to get to by elevating these Christian creative projects but it's just simply uh, hey come check out this cool thing that some Christians are putting together. Ultimately, Legacy AD gets a 3.5 out of 5 review from the explanations. If you guys would love to pick up your own copy and take a read of it on your own, then the link is in the description below. If you would love to support them through the Kickstarter campaign for the third issue, then the link for that is also in the description below. I'll be breaking down the third issue when it comes out. But until then, that's it for this video and if you enjoyed it, then please leave a like on it and subscribe for more of this content. And leave a comment with your grade sheet on what you think about Legacy AD based on what was discussed in the video. And what do you think on this style of video and our ranking system? Was it fair and just right or can it use some work and suggestions? If you enjoyed the video to this point and you are looking for something else to check out on the channel, then I highly recommend our video from last week where we discussed why Christian fiction sucks but it is slowly getting better, which is available in the end card right about now.